Namaste to all of you. Welcome back to my channel. This is Anvi and today I'm going to talk about one of the questions that's been bothering me for quite a long time. Now, every time I'm talking with friends or acquaintances about politics, one of the first questions I'm asked is, are you left wing or are you right wing? And I honestly don't think that it is a very simple or a straightforward answer. And unfortunately, in today's times, the political discourse and the intellectual discourse, even with friends and acquaintances, even in an informal setting, has become so devoid of nuance and of discussion and of reasoning that it becomes so difficult to put forward your point or to even unravel your thoughts and make the other people understand from where you have arrived at that conclusion. Now, before we get further into the video, please make sure to like, share and subscribe to the channel and also click the notification icon so that you don't miss out on any of the future episodes. So to begin with, I honestly don't think that very simplistic definitions of what is left wing or right wing is going to work, especially in today's climate. This is mainly because the human civilization has gone through so much of history and each single country has gone through so much and each country has its own unique kind of journey that I think it is impossible to box any country as a left wing or a right wing country at all. Now to give a simple example, if you compare a country like India to a Western country like the USA or the UK, one of the main political talking points in today's times is the treatment of minorities in both the cases. However, I feel one of the main differences is completely ignored in these discussions. Now, when you talk about minority and majority in India, the segregation is based on religion, whereas the segregation of minority and majority in USA or the UK is largely based on race. Secondly, I also think it is very important to see the historical perspective and the context of what these minorities and the majorities have gone through. Now, in the case of India, the minority community, which is the Muslims, they have not been the community that has been ruled over. Rather, the Muslims were the invaders to India. They ruled over India for over 800 years until the British Raj came. In contrast, when you look at USA or the UK, the minority community has also been historically ruled over and subjugated to prejudice. Now, I honestly feel that these kind of nuances and historical truths cannot be ignored when you enter into discussions of what the current day's political climate is. Even if you look at it from the opposite angle, the majority community in India, which is the Hindus, they have been the community that has been ruled over. Whereas the majority community in USA, UK, which is the whites, they have always been the conquerors and never been the ones that have been conquered. Now, this reasoning is in no way to say that because of the historical facts or the historical truths, any minority community deserves to be given lesser rights or deserves to not be treated equally, not at all. I think it is high time that humanity realizes the actual essence and the meaning of equality, but I guess that's a topic for a completely different video. Yet at the same time, to ignore these historical facts and these historical truths is not going to serve anybody. And this is why to put any country into very simplistic brackets of left wing or right wing is not going to solve the problem. Even in terms of the expectations that we have from each of the countries, it cannot be universally applied. It has to be taken into context of what the country has gone through historically and also where it stands in today's world. And I feel that that would be a much more healthier way of either judging a country on its actions or at measuring our own expectations of what we expect from a particular country. So it would be logical to hold a country like India, which has not yet reached its 100 years since gaining independence, to the same standards and expectations as you would hold a developed Western country. Now, it is a completely different thing that India has already achieved massive strides in almost every sector. But that apart, again, when we measure our expectations or the standards of every country, we have to take into account each country's individual standing and its history and how all that has affected its current situation as well. Now, the third and according to me, the most important point is the point of religion and culture. No matter how hard we try to keep religion and politics completely segregated, I personally don't think it is possible to do so. It is because it is religion that dictates the morality and the framework of values of a particular society. So when you look at the right wing or the conservative parties in the USA or the UK, their morality framework, their framework of values and their standpoints are largely defined by Judeo-Christian values. 
The same when you look at the right-wing parties or the conservative parties in India, it is largely dictated by the values in Hinduism. The same goes to a person who practices Islam. If he is a right-wing or a conservative practicing Muslim, his viewpoints will definitely be largely dictated by what is preached in Islam. You might try and keep religion completely aside in the implementation of your political values and your laws. And you might ensure that religion does not become the reason why a person is meted out either justice or injustice. But when it comes to framing of the political laws itself of a particular society or a country, it cannot be completely segregated by its inherent culture and religion. In fact, the way that each religion looks at the other religion itself is so vastly different. The way an Abrahamic religion looks at a non-Abrahamic religion is completely different as compared to the opposite. When you take some of the most prominent and hot global issues in today's times, whether it be LGBT rights, abortion laws or transgender rights, the standpoint of each person from a different country will be completely and unequivocally different. So if you have three people and all three of them say that they lean towards the right of the political spectrum, but one is a Hindu, one is a Muslim, and one is a Christian. And if you ask them what their viewpoint is about a particular topic, whether it be transgender rights or abortion laws, each person's viewpoint and answer will be inherently and unequivocally different. All this is to say that you cannot really dissect the culture of a place with its political laws and viewpoints. Even Jordan Peterson has mentioned in one of his videos about the importance of the cultural programming that human beings require. And in fact, a child's first introduction is to his own culture and religion rather than to the politics of the place that he belongs to. So I guess it would be safe to say that it does not serve any logical purpose to try and dissect the both just for the sake of it. I do realize that I haven't yet answered the question of whether I belong to the left wing or the right wing. This has rather been a very lengthy explanation of why you really cannot have a universal definition of either of them. And that is exactly why I refuse to put myself into a particular box. I'm from India and I live now in the UK. So my moralistic framework is largely informed by my own roots and my culture and my upbringing. However, as I live here in the UK, I find that sometimes my ideas and my viewpoints do sway more towards what would work for me practically in my day-to-day -day life here in the UK as well, rather than sticking only to what had worked in the other society while I was living there. As much as possible, I try to inform my viewpoints and my standpoints with both common sense and humanitarianism. Only humanitarianism without common sense is going to lead to the kind of chaos that we see largely in today's Western society among the youngsters. But only common sense without humanitarianism is not going to work as well because we humans, we need to think and we also need to feel. And I feel that both these aspects have to go hand in hand, even when it comes to our political ideas. I'm sure there will be a lot more to unpack as well in this particular topic. Please comment below and let me know where you're from, where you live, how do the political uh, views and standpoints affect your personal views and standpoints and whether you consider yourself as a left winger or a right winger and where you stand on the spectrum. Thank you so much for being with me here today. Until next time, take care. Namaste.